what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are here, uh, Dayton 24-7 Sports Podcast here uh, as SE Live 365 uh, is going to uh, try to do something never been done before. We're going to launch this podcast, all right? Now, I'm here with, my name's Deion Cash, by the way, in case I didn't say it, and I'm here with my compadres, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Bullshit. Hey, <laughs> Lorenzo Smith. I'm with Hoop for You. You can check me out on all social medias. Um, I'm with the Blueprint Podcast. I'm Matt Digby. I'm the sports reporter at uh, ABC 22, Fox 45, Dayton 24 7 Now. You can follow me uh, on Twitter and on Instagram at Matt 247 Now. All right. Pleasure to have you guys in the building, man. And a uh, historic uh, month of March uh, here, especially. Uh, when it comes to March Madness, for sure. And we got a lot to talk about Talk about today, all right? First off, we're going to talk high school girls' state recap. Uh, we have winners, um, and then we have some legendary winners. Uh, mm-hmm. And we'll talk about how Tri-Village, Purcell, Mary, and Princeton got it done, all right? Then we'll hit the high school boys' segment where uh, Centerville, CJ, Rusha, and others uh, will be entertaining the state uh, championship star-studded event, and then – Mr. Basketball was announced, so we'll chop it up on that. And, of course, we got to get the March Madness. Uh, Dayton Flyers, how did they do uh, in the A-10? And uh, the first four, which has been great so far already. Um, and it's then we got our final four picks. And I know Matt's already – Matty Ice has already got his ready to go. Mr. Smith is looking at his right now. Uh, and then we wrap it up a little bit. Uh, how you doing, Matty Ice? Doing well. Uh, like you said, a busy slate of uh, games uh, – Busy slate of activity over at UD Arena. We just had the uh, girls' basketball state championships finish up, and there were some good games, too, especially uh, the one Miami Valley team that was able to make it, Dry Village. They were able to finish a perfect season, 30-0. and 0. First uh, time they've been able to do that, and actually something I found out on Saturday at the championship game, they are the first school where both the boys and girls teams have gone a perfect 30-0 and in a season. The boys did it, I think, about eight, nine years ago, mm-hmm. and the girls just doing it this year. So for that to be done never before in Ohio and Tri-Village from Dark County to be the first school, that's pretty impressive. No question about it. Mr. Smith, you got some, uh, you got some people on that team? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm just impressed with uh, small schools uh, like Tri-Village and what they've done. Uh, the last, what, 10 years, we're talking about boys' team. And the boys' team went far, too, the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. So. They were regionals, I believe. They yeah. were regional semifinals, yep. Yes, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. For the, to go 30-0 and 0 with both programs in the last 10 years, that's impressive. No question. That's uh, Riley Sagister. Is that who was mm-hmm. running the show yep, this season? Yep, Riley Sagister had uh, 20 points. Didn't. They were able to do a good job uh, keeping her uh, uh, from scoring in the first half. Uh, Toledo Christian did in that championship game, but then once Sagister took over scoring-wise in the second quarter, it was uh, definitely Tri-Villages to lose, and they were able to maintain momentum. Toledo Christian did get a three right at the buzzer to make it a 52-50 final, but it was a situation that Tri-Village was always just able to keep Toledo Christian at arm's length uh, from the second quarter on, and uh a uh, great uh, end to their season. And uh, Dark County definitely showed out uh, a lot of uh, student support from the new Madison community. No question. Try Village, come holler at us, man. Yeah. Come chop it up with us, champions. I we think they shut them. down the city, didn't it? It seemed like. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, when you win the championship, you should. Everybody should be out <laughs> celebrating uh, one time, and uh, they definitely deserve it. And like you said, Mr. Smith, they are one of the elite programs right now uh, in Southwest Ohio. Uh, on the other side, now let's flip to the uh, to the south, and uh, we'll talk about Purcell Marion, D. Mm-hmm. Alexander, just a uh, enormous performance in the semis, and then came back with a team effort in the championship. Purcell wins their second consecutive title in two different divisions now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk about what you saw in this one, uh, Matt. Yeah, it was a situation where uh, D. Alexander, she had been named earlier in the week as Miss Basketball, so there was always going to be that pressure. Could she deliver? having gotten that honor before the state tournament, but it appeared the pressure did not face her one bit. And now, again, she's only a sophomore. We discussed this on episode one. Is this the start of a potential dynasty for Purcell Marion? There's always a talk about, you know, when is it appropriate to use that word? Uh, what's your guys' take on Purcell Marion and uh, that certain D word, dynasty? Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. Kind of reminds me of uh, when Mount Notre Dame had their mm-hmm. run. And uh, for them to do it, what they got three seniors now, uh, uh, the reigning, she's back next year. Yep. Um, 
It's gonna be. It's gonna. It might be a three P. Looks like it's gonna be a three P. But or a four P. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Alexander's a sophomore. Yep. So yeah. What'll end up happening is, I mean, best case right for them, they win next year. Then, power of balance, they go up to D one. So right. her senior year, she plays D one, and they're able to win up there. Now that's gonna be the real test, I think. Obviously. Yeah. You've already won three in a row, and then you go in. Now, if they don't win, they'll stay in the division. They'll probably stay division two, yep. right, I would think, um, unless they get to the state and just somehow something happens or whatever. But um, just a do- – I mean, she's she's everything and some. She is the next LeBron James of Ohio as far as just dominance and, like, star status. She's, she looks like a superstar on the court. You just can't take your eyes off of her. And she does these moves like guys running and jumping and catching. And, like, she plays really grounded, has a great flow to her game. But she's so athletic, and it's scary. And she's going to be dunking soon, I believe. And uh, that, that was one thing I was uh, – uh, one of those what-if scenarios because Purcell Marion was in a different division last year, so they didn't have to play Alter. Alter, of course, the champions in D2 from 2022. But mm-hmm. then – they would have faced each other in the regional final, but Alter lost to Baden in the regional semi. So Purcell Marion ended up playing Baden for the regional title. So it's always interesting mm-hmm. that what if, what if Alter plays Purcell Marion in the future? Uh, how, how would that game go? That would have been a good one to watch, and I think we all thought that was going to happen, mm-hmm. and it didn't yeah. happen. So that's March. That's February mas- yes. Madness. You know what I mean? That's uh, OSHA Madness, as you would say. Um, but, I mean, do you see any – what do you – what do you see with this lady, man? I mean, you 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 study the game. What do you see with her? Uh, you're talking about one of the top next late next level young ladies, and like you said, the LeBron James of uh, you know the, the young ladies in Ohio. She is she is she's gonna be uh, a top next level player wherever she goes to school. So. She's smacking dudes. I believe <laughs> she could go on the yeah. varsity on the boys team and average double figures. Like yeah, I'm, I I'm believe dead it. serious. Not like no disrespect. She just built like that. Um, but congratulations to her, and we'll see. They also have a dynamite team. Yeah. She's good, and they have some other great players that are coming up as well. So that'll be good to watch. And then Cincinnati, Princeton, getting it done uh, in the championship, and uh, that's their first one uh, with their head coach and. Mm-hmm. It was a team effort with them also, but the Gatorade Player of the Year doing doing a lot of damage. Um, I know you got a chance to watch the game. What did you see with that? Yeah, I, I didn't have a chance to watch a ton of the D1 game, uh, but, yeah, Princeton, it looks like a very methodical. They went on a big run in the second quarter to take advantage. I did also – I did, though, have a chance to catch a bit of the D3 title game, uh, Afrocentric taking on Doylestown Chippewa, and that was a game where Afrocentric just set the tone from the opening tip-off. They went on a big run uh, in the first quarter, kept that momentum going in the second quarter, and uh, actually seeing here, most points scored by a team in the D3 state championship game, 75-62 was the final. But the uh, the Nubians, they've been one of the premier programs for some time now in the state of Ohio, and uh, they backed it up again this year w- with the D3 state title. Do you think they're going to get moved up? Because, I mean, they, they have been dominating on both sides, and uh, Dalen Swain, just yeah. a, I mean, is he, is he really a Division three? I mean, we know he's an elite player. You think they're gonna that competitive balance? I believe you t- you'll see though that team move up to Division two. I can I can see that next year. Um, you know, like you said, both both sides. Uh, uh, you're talking about the boys and the girls. Yeah, they. And uh, for the last few years, Afrocentric has been tough. She, they got like eight titles. Eight yeah. titles. Yeah, that that ties Mount Notre Dame. Yeah. that is insane. We're talking about in a short amount of time. Short. Uh, yeah, Afrocentric hadn't been I open mean, that long. Have they been up twenty years? Uh, Something, I mean, we'll get our uh, our uh, research guy to do some some work yeah. on that one. But I mean, it's just been incredible. Like, if we're talking about competitive balance, mm-hmm. okay. I mean, it's y'all didn't want a lot, and this y'all might want to move up anyway. You know, and go ahead and win on that level. But uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. congratulations to uh, those uh, those teams on the girls' side. Um, biggest your biggest takeaway from the girls' tournament. Biggest takeaway, uh, good crowds, especially for the uh, the communities in general. You know, being able to see Tri Village in their semifinal against Berlin Highland, they had a great turnout. Certainly, though, only being an hour away as opposed to they weren't having to drive all across the state, that certainly helped. 
and also the timing as well with them too. Tri Village, you know, playing their championship game at two in the afternoon, certainly a lot easier than if they were playing at ten in the morning, which uh, that's what ended up happening for D two. Although obviously it didn't hurt Purcell Mary, and that it wasn't yeah. the longest drive in the world for them. Yeah, they, they had a. It was convenient for them. What, what's your biggest takeaway from my uh, biggest takeaway is just the the skill level of the young ladies now. It's just on another level, uh, just how skilled they are. And then, uh, um, you know, just have teams uh, uh, in this area, even, you know, P Purcell Marion is, uh, what, yeah. 45 minutes yep. away. Yeah. You're talking about Princeton is 45 minutes yeah. away, away. And then you're talking about Tri-Village, which is, what, 35, 30, 35, 40, 40, yeah. 40 yeah. 45, yep. In this area with yeah. such high-level young ladies. So, I, you know, yeah, it's, I, it's impressive. Uh, I'm telling you, I just think that Southwest Ohio is ruling uh, bas girls basketball. Um, right now, just dominating uh, basketball. <laughs> uh, Columbus got got a uh, win last year, but before that, Mount Notre Dame and now Princeton. And then now you got Purcell coming through. And you got some, you know, Wayne was great for a minute, for a while. Mm -hmm. Centerville's been great. It, it, to Fair come out, of, this, yeah. come out mm -hmm. of Cincinnati is tough, and then come out of Dayton is tough. It, Southwest Ohio is really running and gunning in girls basketball. We're going to come back here in a moment with the boys. Uh, make sure you lock in Dayton 24 to 7 sports podcast with Maddie Ice and Mr. Smith. Yes, DK. sir. Yep. Lock in with us, man. Uh, March Madness. Welcome back here. Uh, Dayton 24 7 uh, sports podcast. Uh, we're launching week number two here, and I'm with Maddie Digby and Mr. Smith, and uh, we're going to talk high school boys uh, state. Now, Matt. You got a chance to see what it's like up here in the, with these mm -hmm. regional, those boys action. Uh, we'll start. We'll start at the top, man. We're gonna go ahead and start at the top. Did you go to the Centerville game or the CJ game? I was at the CJ Alter game okay. uh, back on Saturday. That was a great environment over at the Butler High School in Vandalia, and it was a great game to boot. You know, I had a chance to see CJ and Alter when they played at CJ in the regular season, and that was a, a big win for the Eagles early in the season. Then they got the win on the designated road game at Alter. That game was played at Centerville. But then uh, that was a battle back and forth between the Eagles and the Knights. And it, it kind of played like I expected to. You know, CJ is starting out on the front foot. They've been touted as one of the top teams in the state. But then Alter showing, hey, they, ha they have some players too. And there was definitely some times, especially in the second half, when it looked like Alter may run away with the game. But CJ saying, you know, not so fast. And the Eagles, especially those last four or five minutes, they were able to make the shots when it counted. Alter just... Couldn't quite keep that momentum from earlier in the game. And we got uh, a Division II state semifinalist in the Chaminade Julian Eagles. And they've, they've got an early game coming up on Friday, 10.45 a.m. That's when they play Rocky River Lutheran West. And uh, Mr. Smith, now, you know, the most talked about player in the area since he walked in here has been GW, mm. <laughs> George Washington. Why? Because... He came in and was like, I want Gabe Cups in Centerville, which is like fighting words in Dayton basketball, right? Yeah. Like, bro, you don't come in talking like you about to do this. Who are you? Well, he showed us who he was and everything else in that uh, last game. Um, you, you've heard all the chatter. What do you think about George and uh, Chaminade? They back to back. They go back to back. They lose Jonathan Powell, but they gain the Washington family. Yeah. Um, what do you think about what they've done? Uh, since he's, you know, walked on the CJ's campus, I always I, I saw him first uh, in the pickup game, and I said, oh, he's tough. Um, you know, I was just uh, disappointed that he decommitted from Ohio State. And then Bishop, oh, gee, Why all, you do that to <laughs> your Of boy? all schools. Yeah, and they then Michigan. Need you. I promise schools. you go to Ohio State, G-Dub, you're getting 20. You, but I'm, you're getting that. I'm a uh, Jawan, uh, uh, I'm a Howard fan, so – um, you know, it, it, it's a good move for him. Yeah. But um, he's going to do what he does. It's the guys around him. You're talking about an Evan Dickey, uh, Kylie we Weatherspoon, some of those guys, those glue guys uh, um, that's doing a good job. Just think what they went into, I believe, the fourth quarter against mm -hmm. Alter, uh, a little bit over three minutes, down eight. Yeah. And then uh, end up pulling that out. He just, he just took over. But uh, those guys had some good – Defensive plays, great rebounding, a couple stops, turnovers. So uh, my thing is some of the glue guys that came through for CJ. No question. Uh, the defense, um, 
Evan Dickey had three steals and two blocks and eight points. And I'm gonna say it now: this is these are the type of players Wright State should be dra- like looking to recruit. Mm-hmm. Like Swiss Army knife, he stands about six four. He's got long arms. He's super athletic. He's gonna come right in and play. He's, um, he's he plays with the system. He can play fast. He can play slow. Um, but the numbers of George Washington that day was just phenomenal. Thirty two points. Mm-hmm. 14 or 15 from the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's four for nine from three, and he hit two. Big, he hit a big one late in the game, and a couple of big shots. He had six assists. So why you say all oh, he takes a lot of shots? But he also threw that alley oop to Evan Dickey that will he go did. down and, and is one of the great dunks uh, 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 for <laughs> Chaminade. And um, you know he had you know he had two turnovers, but two steals as well. Just he did everything. You know what I mean? And he did what he needed to do. The leadership, that's what I like yes. about him. He, he, you could tell he, if he misses, he, if he takes a shot and misses, he's going to accept it. But he's like, I'm going to take the shot, though. Yep. I'm going to lead this. And that's what I saw with him. And that's why I think ultimately they can get it done. Last year, Jonathan Powell was not a leader per se, he was a sophomore. He wasn't a leader, but he was a dynamite scorer and player. Mm-hmm. Um, but George Washington's a leader. And, yeah. uh, I that saw was a great that. trade-off, though. I mean, it was. A, <laughs> I mean, it worked out for both teams. Yeah. I must say. As we go to the other team, the Centerville Elks. Now these boys, they ran the G-Walk three years in a row. Yep. And now they're running to the state three years in a row. And this is, this is going to bring up some feelings because now you start seeing how great is this. Is I mean, we're talking about a dynasty. I mean, if they win this year, that's two out that's of three. That's two out of three. Yeah. And now you got to be like, and, John, and Jonathan Powell's coming back. Right, yeah. So, um, but for them to get there, Fairfield was up forty-eight, forty-five. Uh, looked, you know, it was kind of the darkest moment of the elk season. Yep. And at that point, uh, Gabe Cups also NJ stepped up, uh, was aggressive, and Jonathan Powell, uh, he hit that two K meter button and it went crazy. And when he dunks the ball, there's a certain energy that goes through that team, and uh, Fairfield just kind of willed it, man. It was tough. Uh, did you hear about the game? or? Yeah, I was able to hear a bit about the game. Yeah, like you say, Fairfield did have the lead after the third quarter, so it was like, oh, uh, Centerville is not going to be – it wasn't going to be smooth sailing like it was. You know, I saw them a couple weeks ago in the district final against Anderson, but that goes to show the Elks' resiliency, and I think that's a, a big part of that is because of the tough schedule they played at the G-Walk. You know, Wayne is going to bring it 100% every night. Fairmont's going to bring it 100% every night. That's why those two were in district finals to represent the conference as well. So Centerville, they did what needed to be done. Not always the prettiest, but at, at, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's what matters, the result. And we'll certainly talk about it just a few minutes with Rushi. That it's at the end of the day, the result is what matters. And now Centerville gets their rematch with Pick Central. The way the brackets were set up, they got a semifinal with the Tigers this year instead of the state championship. Crazy. And uh, they should have redone that. That wasn't a good move. <laughs> a lot of people feel like uh, that, too. Uh, but, that uh, should have been a state man, championship game. Yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of the state championship, I mean, uh, the game, the take on Pick Central, right? Now, it has been reported that yes. Devin Royal is Mr. Basketball in Ohio. Rightfully so, yeah. But, but the debate is who else should have been in that – uh, in that category, which is George Washington the third, yeah. and Lauren Rice. All right, we could I'll easily say those two should have been in the Master bat- Basketball category. The fact that neither were finalists is, was very surprising, especially George Washington. G Dub has been named the Gatorade Player of the Year. Well, Gatorade says he's wow. the Player of the Year, but the Ohio sports writers say he's not even worthy of a finalist. I need that smack in my head emoji. <laughs> sports yep. writers, come on, y'all, y'all know better, right? Come on, man, yeah. especially the ones around here. Like, you saw – you've seen enough. So, yeah. and, you know, but that's how it goes. He's a national player. Yeah. He's not just a local player. That's why he won that because that's leaves a big time. All right, uh, as we to get – To be fair, really quickly, the vote between Royal and Cups for the Mr. Basketball is very close. I saw, like, yeah. 90 to 87. So, yeah, yeah I, I think – yeah, I, I think it deserved to be that close. Yeah. And now they're going to get a chance to face each other again on the uh, on the court in uh, in person. Devin Royal, you, you cool with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, I thought he should have won it last year. Um, this year was a lot closer. Um, and like you said, they were missing not only those two, but the uh, um, the kid from Afrocentric, yeah. 
he wasn't in there. Daylon so. Swain. Da- Daylon Swain wasn't in there. So mm-hmm. they were missing a couple of kids. No question. Uh, uh, but you're talking about Centerville, 80, 80 and 7 record. This is mm. the third time to the state championship. I mean, the Bobby Hurley of high, Ohio High School basketball, Gabe yeah. Cups, man. You, you don't got to like him, but he wins a whole lot and he do it his way. All right, we come back with March Madness in a minute. Uh, you got Dayton 24 7 uh, Sports Podcast. This is Carla Knox Gordon with Paco, the Puerto Rican American and Caribbean organization, and I rock with SC Live 365. Welcome back to the Dayton 24 7 Now Sports Podcast. Matt Digby joined by Dion Cash and Coach Lorenzo Smith. Uh, we've had a chance to talk about high school boys and girls basketball, and now it's also time for March Madness. And first, we're going to start with one team that is not in the madness the University of Dayton Flyers. They did make it all the way the Atlantic 10 championship game, but this was something that we knew for quite some time. It was going to be, they had to win the A-10 tournament to get a bid. The chances of an at-large were next to none, if not flat out nothing. So they had opportunities. It was theirs for the taking, but then they don't make a free throw the entire last 10 minutes of the game. You're not going to win any basketball game that way. They lose uh, 68-56 the final. And uh, VCU gets the A-10's automatic bid. They are the 12th seed. They'll take on St. Mary's. So the season actually is over for Dayton. They made an announcement not long after the selection show that uh, they will be declining any postseason invitational tournaments. Um, It was actually reported, I saw, that they had let the NIT or the other uh, tournaments know that they would not be interested ahead of time so they never formally received an invite so there was nothing that they had to decline but uh, uh, bottom line is though season is over for UD a season that began with them as the heavy favorites to win the Atlantic 10 they got the two seed they made it all the way to the championship game but uh, they just for one reason or another they weren't able to make a basket uh, the last 10 minutes of the game and that ultimately cost them yeah, um, they shot poorly in the second half. It was a close game. Yeah. Um, but I think the – I just don't think they were quite – they weren't better. They just weren't better than VCU, right? I mean, yeah. VCU had the player of the year in Baldwin, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then they win the league. So, if you're Deron Holmes, you got to come back, right? Now, I mean, they're saying he's, he's – he's, is he – I'm not sure where he's at in, like, as far as draft status or whatever. Um, but if you ain't in the first – 20 top 10 but i think he's in the first 20 i Uh, if he's in the first 20 he probably will bounce um i mean he's had a really good year very good year um able to bounce back after had started fast had a little bit of a slump with the team but he bounced Mm -hmm. back and almost won player of the year um but vcu just a little bit stronger they beat ud at home yeah vcu won at ud the friday before martin luther king weekend But then a couple weeks later, Dayton goes on the road to VCU and wins there. Yeah, so it was a we knew it was going to be a tight battle. It was just who could, who and it comes down to the second half if you can make shots. Exactly. And UD just didn't make enough shots. Um, you're hearing all, you're hearing the the online chatter. Oh, get rid of Grant or whatever. Or didn't, you know, and you got some trollers out here that don't like them. But hey, how about you lose a family member and then try to coach a team to a March Madness? Uh, to March Madness and come literally 20 minutes away from doing that. So I think he did a hell of a job. Trollers fall back, you know what I mean? And just, you know, fall back, go to somebody else or something. But, uh, you know, Coach Grant, I think he'll be fine. Uh, Although, you know, people are never happy, man, in this city, I'm going to tell you. What you got? What you got with uh, Dayton, man? You know what? I think he did a a hell of a job this year. Uh, You know, What do you think about the NIT? That's the one question. Are you cool that they didn't do it? I'm fine because uh, um, it was reported that they had a lot of people who were nursing injuries. Yep. I think somebody got hurt at, in the VCU game. One of the players uh, got yeah, hurt I'm trying to remember at the v, was, uh, VCU yeah. game. So if, if that's the case, I would have loved to see them in the NIT, get a home game in the NIT. But, uh, you know, if that's if that's the case, then so be it. Well, that's the other thing that, that you bring up, the fact that if they were in the situation where they had the NIT – they would have had to go on the road because UD Arena is already booked for the yeah, first four right, for yeah. the Boys State tournament. <laughs> they would have definitely the first round game, probably the second round. They probably would have only had a chance for one home game in the third round had they made it 
before if they continue that run, they would have to go out to the semis and championship games in Vegas this year. It's no longer at Madison Square Garden. It's in Vegas. So, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I don't know if that was a factor in it, but certainly you can look at it now and say, well, uh, potential of three home games, but realistically only one of those, and it, and it, no guarantee that you win the first or second round games as we saw with Rutgers. Yeah, yeah. Well, they could have went out to Wright State and played because Wright State's not using their gym. Yeah. The Nutter Center. I'm just, just <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> I don't know how Wright State would feel about that. Shots so, fired. Yeah. Uh, Ohio, <laughs> speaking of using the gyms, uh, real quickly, Ohio State, um, the girls are doing their number three seed in their bracket uh, mm-hmm. real quickly. But the Ohio State's using their gym all weekend for the first and second round. So, shout out to uh, them. There will be some great games up there. We'll, um, but in the meantime, when we're, talk, we're talking uh, for, uh, first four, uh, yep. it was a great uh, great first day of basketball. Oh, it was outstanding. Uh, as a, a Florida – Golf, what, golf co- um. It was Texas A&M Corpus Christi over Southeast Missouri in the uh, first game. That was a game I, you and I both had a chance to see it. It was yeah. a game that Corpus, Corpus yeah. Christi actually, to me, seemed like the more proactive team. And they were doing what needed to be done, getting to the basket. They got SEMO in foul trouble big time. I mean, they had SEMO had three guys foul out when all was said and done. One guy, I think, fouled out. And they were still like 12, 11 minutes still to go in the game. So they, they they did what needed to be done, but credit to Sebo, uh, Chris Harris. He literally dragged that team back into the game, making shot after shot. I think he finished with like twenty three points. I want to say, mm-hmm. and the heavy majority of them in the second half. But uh, Corpus Christi for them, it's only their third appearance in the NCAA tournament, their first win, and uh, well done to Steve Lutz and the Islanders. But at uh, the flip side, now they get to take <laughs> on the top overall seed in Alabama in, in the number Birmingham. one seed. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> On Friday, right? On Thursday. 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 Thursday yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you get you get a win, and then you got to come back and play again. Yeah. Now Pittsburgh. Uh, you yeah. Know, that game, one. I mean, both games. UD couldn't have asked for a better first two games. You know, sixty-one, sixty. Uh, Mississippi State draws up a play. Actually. Sixty fifty-nine. Yeah. 60, yeah. Uh, the final score was sixty fifty-nine. Sixty fifty-nine. Okay. Yep. Um, Final play of the game, Mississippi State draws up a great play. I they mean, do. couldn't be much better. Completely f- confused the guys. The, the defense is all in the paint. The guy's standing right open, and he just leaned too far into the shot. He tried to shoot it in there with himself instead of just following through. But the guy had a tip. Yeah, the, the guy, had they had a guy right down there, there for a tip in. And my view, it would have gone in. It would have They would have gotten it off in time. But, uh, yeah, ultimately neither effort went in. And, uh uh, Jabarius Burt with the game-winning shot in the final 10 seconds for the Panthers. He's sending uh, the Panthers to the round of 64. They will take on Iowa State. Uh, they're actually headed back to Greensboro. They were just there for the ACC tournament. Now they're there for the NCAA tournament. Uh, yeah, they headed back. Yeah, they headed back. Now, um, let's get to the tournament, shall we? Uh, I need y'all final four picks and... Who who are we looking at here as we get ready now? You first. Oh, uh, just no. right. My final four. Um, I got a dark horse. Uh, I'm a Texas guy, so I'm going with Houston. Who's going to win it all? Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to go with Kansas. Uh, uh, Bill Self come back, and then uh, Alabama definitely. But then nobody's thinking of watch Kansas State. You that's like Kansas that. State? Yeah, that's watch that's Kansas State. Sneak yeah. team, all right. <laughs> okay. What about you, Matty? I I'm going to go with uh, – I like Arizona over Alabama in the Elite Eight. So I'm going to pick Arizona as my final four. Purdue, I think – one of my big upsets, I think Michigan State, you can never count out the Spartans in March. So I have Izzo and the Spartans make it all the way to the Elite Eight before their run ends against Purdue. Houston – uh, I think they will. They'll beat Xavier in the Elite Eight. I do have Xavier making it all the way uh, to the regional final, and then I like UCLA over Kansas. Uh, those have been some great battles between the Jayhawks and Bruins over the years. I think UCLA uh, gets the job done in 2023. My championship game, I got Arizona going up against Houston, and I'm going to go with the Cougars. I think uh, Kelvin Sampson uh, definitely has his team playing the right way, yes. even with the loss to Memphis in the American title game. But uh, I think the Cougars uh, will find that just to be a, a little speed bump on the way to uh, what I anticipate will be a national championship for them. Oh, okay, nice, man. Y'all, y'all really did y'all work on this. All right, I got uh, Gonzaga. Uh, I got Bama. I got Kentucky as my sleeper team to get there. They've been very hot, and uh, their bracket, I feel like, is – 
it's one it's that bracket that's gonna be a bust you know kind of upset bracket and then I got Houston just because when I look at it I'm not a believer as far as I mean I like what Indiana do but I don't know and then Xavier is very nice I do like them as well but uh, Houston, um, they lost the championship without their star player, and I think yep. that's going to motivate them. This would be three in a row for them to get to the Final Four. Um, I like um, – I don't – I mean, I'm going to go with Houston. Uh, they haven't won it yet. They've been close a couple times. Many, oh, And I many. feel like Bama's new to the game. Kentucky will reach their limit at the Final Four, and Gonzaga – I like them, but I don't know if they're the best. Um, but I'm going to go with Houston this year to win it all. All right. On the girls' side, real quickly, uh, I got – who's your four? My four are South Carolina, Stanford, UConn, and Indiana. And I'm going to go with uh, Stanford. I, uh, big respect for what Tara Vanderveer's done over the years. Of course, former Ohio State women's head coach back in the day. And uh, I think they can get the job done against South Carolina in the final four. And uh, Stanford, I believe Stanford over UConn uh, is my uh, championship game pick. You got any girls? Right. Yeah, right quick. I, I second that emotion, but I'm going with South Carolina to okay. double up. So, all right, final four: I got South Carolina, LSU, Ohio State, and Iowa. Um, Iowa, South Carolina, South Carolina. Once again, I'm going with them. That'd be two in a row for them. Don Staley gets it done, and uh, that will be that. Uh, now we only got a few seconds. Uh, who's our athlete of the week? One more time, Mr. Mm-hmm. Jay. Oh, you said that too fast. <laughs> Who's our athletes of the week? We got uh, Darius, two, Darius Dennis. Yeah, seven graders. Over, over um, at Trotwood. And then we have the guard from Wayne as well. Yeah. And uh, we're glad to have those two as our athletes of the week. And who was your team of the week? Uh, Tri-Village Girls Basketball. They were, we spoke last week, they were getting ready for their state semifinal, and now they've gotten the semifinal and championship wins under their belt, 30-0, uh, something that will never be taken away, erased from the history books. So shout out to the Lady Patriots. All right. Yeah. And the, the, the Wayne girl was Des Thomas. That was her name, Des All right, Thomas. shout out to Des, Des Thomas mm-hmm. and uh, Mr. Dennis, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and with that being said, uh, my team of the week, uh, Chaminade. I'm going, with, uh, yep. I'm going with my guy. Uh, George Washington, he was, you know, he he bragged about it and then he did it. So I got to give a shout out to the boy and also yes. Centerville as well. You get back three times in a row, you got to get a shout. All right, with that being said, we got to wrap it up here. It's been a great uh, session for us. Uh, Matt, you got anything real quick? Uh, let's uh, let's hope for a great season of uh, March Madness in 2023. All right, you got anything real quick? Same here. I'm looking forward to March Madness. All right, lock in with Dayton and the rest of March Madness. We'll be yes, on each sir. and every week. Dayton 24-7 Sports Podcast. Powered by SD Live 365, and uh, we up out of here, man. Shout out to the Coaches Clinic. Ah.